Hello and welcome to this OpenTX Quick Tip. This one is around how you can use two switches on your radio to give you six flight modes. Now in a previous video I actually fitted the six position switch onto the shoulder here of my Tyrannus X9D Plus and I use that with things like Vector, Pixhawk, uh, APM, those kind of things. But for those of you that don't have one of these switches installed, or you want to use a slightly simpler way of doing it without getting the soldering iron out, then there is a very simple way. And this is something that I've been asked a lot over the last couple of months, and a Patreon has just been in touch and asked about it as well. So it's high time that I made a video to explain it. Now we're going to be using Companion. Uh, I'm using Companion 2.2 here, but the process is the same irrespective of the radio that you're using. I'm going to show you two different ways to get the same result. One is going to be the simple six position switch and the other one is going to be a slightly more complex one. Now the simple six position solution is very simple and it's great if you just want six equidistant positions on whatever channel you're using to control the modes of your flight controller. So let's do that one first. So all I've done is on my mixes, if channel five is going to be our mode channel and maybe SA is the switch that we're gonna move around to change the flight mode. So I'm just show you what that looks like in simulation. So keep your eye on channel five. That's the one that's going to do the modes. As I move switch A, you can see it's gonna move between minus 100 20, minus 20 and 60 and if I put switch B in the other position apart from in the back position then I get minus 60 20 and 100 so this will give us six positions so if switch B is in the back position it gives me minus 100 minus 20 and 60 if switch B is in the front position it gives me 100 20 and minus 60 so there are our six positions on channel 5 let me just show you how we're doing that. And this is here on these two lines, both controlling channel five. Now switch A is the source. That's the one that we're actually going to read the values from, but we're only going to take 80% of the weight and we're going to offset it by minus 20. And that will mean that it will start at the minus 100 and end up at the plus 100 position for the other switch setting. Now the switch that activates this line is when SB is in the back position. So when the SB is in the back position, this is the line that's gonna be active for your modes. The other setting here for channel five is almost identical, apart from the fact that it's not minus 20, it's plus 20 now, and this exclamation mark SB in the back position means when SB isn't in the back position. So what's happening here is the top line is being chosen when switch B is in the top position and when it's not in that position, this one is being used. And what it gives us is the ability to see those three positions. So let me just pop it there. So there's SA, so there's three positions. If it's in another position, we get the other three positions. Now that is great if you are happy and you can tell the flight controller that those six positions are the ones you want to use. However, some flight controllers want the positions in a very particular way. Now, I did a video a while ago where I looked at the Pixhawk and talked about how to calculate the positions that you need if you know the PWM value and how to translate that into the plus 100 to minus 100 channel settings that the Tyrannus has. But let me just show you how we're doing it with a slightly more complex way. So this is how I would do it if I had to get the six positions of those two switches to give me exact PWM values to trigger the flight modes on a flight controller. So again, the way it works is that, again, the, let's go through and show you. SA is giving me three positions with the switch in the other position, it's given me three more. And this time you can see that it's not going from minus 100 to plus 100, that's just the way I've set it up. So let me show you how I've done that. So on the mixes, there aren't, isn't actually anything set for channel five, which is what we would be normally using for the modes. Channel five is all controlled by some logical switch and some special function stuff. So what's happening is, I've set up the logical switches one to six to detect when the switches are in their one of the six positions. So SA in the back middle down position with switch B in the back position. 
which is what we had in the previous example, and also when SA is in the, the same three positions, but this time when switch B isn't in that back position, which is exactly what we had before. But this time what we're doing is we're using the logic in the radio to figure out and turn on these logical switches. Now using those logical switches, we can then set each of those logical switches to override the channel five value with the specific value that we're interested in. At the moment, it goes from the middle channel value, which is zero, bound to minus 100. But these values could be absolutely anything. So it could be 80 in the top position. That could be 54. That could be 22. And that could be zero. And now if we simulate it, let me just show you what the radio output is happening. So we can see here that both of the switches, SA and SB are in the back position. Logical switch one is on. As I move them through the positions, you can see the different logical switches turning on. And now we can see that those three positions are moving on channel five. Again, if I put SB in the other position, then there we have the logical switches going, logical switches four, five, and six turning on. And those are the ones that are setting the values that we have set in these particular boxes. So you could set these to be whatever you wanted to be. Last little trick by doing it this way is because we've got logical switches being turned on by the combination of physical switches, then we can also do some cute stuff like flight modes where the flight modes are actually set up by the individual switches. And what I would do is I would normally put the flight mode name uh, that it was going to activate on the flight controller in here too that correspond to each of those logical switch positions. And that way, when you're flying around, you can see exactly what flight mode you should be in. So normal, angle, horizon mode, I'll put SB in the other position, I get mission mode, GPS return to home, and GPS loiter. So those are the two ways that I would do it. Now what I'm going to do, I'm just going to save this uh, example onto my Dropbox. I'll put a link in the description if you want to download it and take a look, but that's how to do it. So simple six position, you only need one extra line on the output of whatever mix you're using for your control. And that's going to change the weighting with a slight offset. And you're using the second switch in your mixes to switch between the two lines. Or if you want very specific values, and you also want to use something like flight mode so you can have it displayed on your screen what flight mode you have got set on your flight controller, then I would do logical switches to detect each of the six settings for the two switches you want to use to set your six flight modes, and also then use special functions to override the value of the channel that you're using for flight modes with whatever the values need to be. And again, there is that video. I'll put a link down in the description if you want to find out how you translate PWM values that you need to these kind of minus 100 plus 100 values that OpenTX uses. If you found that video useful or like the content, then please hit the like and subscribe button down below. If you want to go the extra step, you can become a Patreon of the Painless360 channel and help provide support for what I do here. All the videos created here are put into playlists, so if you're interested in a particular topic, have a look at the playlist, and they all are organised in there to make them easier to use. If you're not sure if there's a video for your particular problem or topic you want to know more about, then add Painless360 to the Google search term that you're interested in, and that should find the video, article, or content about the particular thing that you're interested in having a look at.